Born in 1930 in El Paso, Texas, Sandra Day O'Connor spent much of her time growing up on a cattle ranch in southeastern Arizona called the Lazy Bee. As a little girl galloping across the prairie with her wind flying, it's like out of a movie. Uh, but that was her life, that's what she did. Spending years researching her life, her biographer, Evan Thomas, reflects how it is that upbringing that made her so self-reliant. She could fire a rifle by the time she was 10 years old. She could drive a truck by the time she was 10 years old. From being a self-proclaimed Arizona cowgirl to graduating third in her class at Stanford Law. She loved Stanford. But after law school, she was turned down for countless jobs at law firms while the men in her class got right in law firms were all male. That's just the way it was. And she dealt with that not by being a ultra feminist activist, you know, there was a big role for that, but that wasn't her. She was a traditional woman in many ways. At law school, she met her husband, John. They settled in Phoenix and had three sons. She was a good mom. In addition to doing everything else, she became a public sector lawyer, served as assistant attorney general in Arizona, and in 1969, the governor appointed her to a vacant state senate seat, which she kept through the next two elections. First woman majority leader of the state senate, right? First woman on the Supreme Court by 12 years. In 1981, President Ronald Reagan appointed her to the Supreme Court, the first female justice. It's where she spent a quarter of a century. She was a critical swing vote for much of her time. They called it the O'Connor Court. She was that powerful. But at home and to many of her friends, she was so much more. She was bossy. She was also loving. You know, she could just kind of scowl. She had those fierce eyes. But then she'd hold your hand. She was a breast cancer survivor, someone who never missed a workout, filled with boundless energy. So it took many by surprise when she announced her retirement in 2006. She approached each case thoughtfully. It will be difficult to fill the void that Justice O'Connor's re resignation has created, nor can anyone assume a similar place in American history. There can only be one first, and Sandra Day O'Connor was it. She would return to the Valley, leaving to care for her husband, who was fighting Alzheimer's. She made that public in 2008 when she fought for more money to fight the disease. I'm here in the position of being a caregiver. My beloved husband, John, suffers from Alzheimer's. He's had it for a long time now, and he's um, not in very good shape at present. And even when his Alzheimer's made him think he was in love with someone else, she handled that with grace. Publicly, she welcomes it. Privately, of course, she's heartbroken. The next year, she lost her husband. She'd watched every step of his battle with the disease for 20 years, and cruelly, it was the same disease that would show up for her. So she's here and yet not here, and I, I tear up every time I think about that because we miss her. Her son Scott says the last chapter of her life was especially meaningful. In 2009, she launched a website filled with interactive civics lessons for kids, now called iCivics. There are six million current iCivics students. The same year, she started what would become the Sandra Day O'Connor Institute, a nonprofit dedicated to solving complex issues through civil discourse and collaborative action. We're still kind of witnessing the evolution of what's mom's, you know, real lasting legacy going to be. Will it be her court opinions? Will it be iCivics? Will it be breaking glass ceilings? Will it be all of those things? In the last few years of her life, she started dating again, even rekindling an old flame. Finally, in October 2018, O'Connor announced her retirement from public life. She wrote, how fortunate I feel to be an American and have been presented with the remarkable opportunities available to the citizens of our country. As a young cowgirl from the Arizona desert, I never could have imagined that one day I would become the first woman justice on the U.S. Supreme Court.